everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology, building our own biomes. And we are back here with Fernville and not Kansas, <laughs> the grassland biome. And I know a lot of you guys are like, Siri, why did you name it not Kansas? Because of, um, you know, that saying, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto, from the Wizard of Oz. So that is why I named grassland not Kansas. Also, I used to live in Kansas City, so it's just kind of a fun play on the fact that it's grasslands over there. But we're going to check in on not Kansas in just a second. For now, I'm going to pop over to Fernville and we are going to check on Fernville, cross our fingers and hope. Okay, it's only been about a month and 14 in since we were last here. We're going to see whether or not our tapirs, loading in, that's very exciting, whether or not the tapirs and the Kodamandi and the capybara that we added are still alive or not. So let's see how this is going. We've got lots of little alerts. Ooh, and look at them. <gasps> You're so pretty. Look at them. Oh my gosh, that's actually so lovely. I love it. Oh, look, it's a baby Kodamundi. Oh my goodness! You guys are so cute! You guys are so cute! Look at all of you! Ah, oh, there's so many juveniles over here. They're adorable. I should probably add in more pineapple because they seem to enjoy pineapple. <gasps> look! Look! It's a capybara! Pretty sure this is a capybara at least. Let's see. What are you, my friend? Yep, it is a capybara. It is six weeks old. It is doing okay on its hunger. So it seems like they're doing all right, but what do our alerts tell us? Multiple groups of ants have low population. Multiple mushrooms have low population. So the other alerts are from a long time ago. Um, but wow, mushrooms? Multiple mushrooms have a low population? Huh. Well, I didn't expect that. I wonder who's eating the mushrooms. And then multiple groups of ants. You're fine. You're fine. Hmm. Where are our little armadillos? So here's our armadillos over here. Their hunger is way up. There's three of them. There's some juveniles incoming. All right. These ants are doing okay. I don't know. It seems like the ants are doing all right. <gasps> Look, it's a tapir. A six-week old tapir. And it seems like he's a little bit hungry. Leaves, roots, and fruits through the day. What about this one? There's two more over here. Go, little Albot. Go. Let's see. And he's kind of hungry, too. And this one's kind of hungry as well. And, oh, that's a one-year-old, 14-week-old, or one-year, 14-week-old yellowfoot tortoise. And let's see. Ants over here. Yeah, our ants seem to be okay. So I'm not sure... Not sure who is having issues, but we'll keep an eye on that. And how are these guys doing? We're always struggling to keep enough of these guys alive, but I added in a lot more populations of them to see if we can maybe, like, yeah, I think we're about to lose this population. And I think the ocelots are doing okay. I wonder what happens. Do you guys know what happens when the juveniles, like, grow up? How does that work? Do they go and make their own territory? I'm not sure what happens there, but they seem to be doing all right. All right, so I think our tapirs are the only ones who are really sort of struggling to feed themselves. We have one who's just kind of pouting in the corner back here. So let's add in some fruit trees, perhaps. Make this guy pretty happy, at least if I can. Oh, there we go. There we go, we'll put in some fruit trees back here. Palm, can I fit this palm somewhere over here? It's kind of hard because, like, you can't just pack things in as thickly as I would think. Oh, where's he going? Where are you going, little one? I want to trot with the tapirs. That sounds like a fun thing to do. Oh, is it this tree? Are you super excited about this tree? I assume you are, maybe? No, you're still pretty hungry. Okay, buddy. You know what? There's such a thing as natural selection. And if you're not going to get yourself out of the tree to go find food elsewhere, I'm not going to feel that bad for you, okay? So the Amazon flame tree is currently actually in its blooming stage. I don't think I can even move him. So come on, buddy. If you're hungry, I don't know how to help him out if he's not going to be able to, like, eat. All right. We'll add in lots of pineapple. So I think we've got a lot of the big fruits in, and now we kind of need more of the low-lying fruits because um, they fit over here pretty well. Ah, add of energy. Buy more energy. There we go. And yeah, we'll get some pineapple put in and then leave these guys be because we have so many things we need to go check on in our grasslands area. And I actually want to put down tons and tons of stuff in the grasslands. I want to fill our grasslands up today, but I do want to make sure that our poor little... Our poor little tapirs will be able to eat and let's see there we go put a little papaya plant down there oh it's so pretty and that means buddy i really i don't know i don't know how to help him albot can you push him albot push him <laughs> i don't know how to help him it's not like you can i don't think you can move things after you put them down we may have a doomed tapir 
he may not be I don't think I don't think he's the smartest thing. I don't think we can help him, you guys. Oh wait, 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 he stopped moving! Are you worn out now? Are you gonna be okay? Oh he's snoozing. Okay, well I hope he can figure out how to handle life. Because right now he's not. <laughs> so we'll just have to leave him be. Alright, one alert. Now I wish when it would tell you this, it would like send you over to where the group of ants that has low health is. Um, is there something that does that? Maybe in these settings? Let's see. Zone, zone, sort by. What if I want to sort by ants? Can I sort by ants? Do 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 ants. Yeah. What if I want to see all my ant populations? All right. So I can kind of see like the stats for them and I can this is actually kind of cool to be able to see like where they're laid out like if I pull back and then go how many mushrooms do we have I might need more mushrooms in zone one along here how's our ocelots doing so that's actually kind of neat we might have to try this more often oh and I definitely need to add in either more moths or more blue morphos we don't really have a lot of blue morphos and if I want these plants to be successful they need to have some pollinators so let's go ahead and get some pollinators over here Hopefully they can fly around. Wouldn't it be cool if you could add bats? I would be so happy if you could add bats. But hopefully they can fly around and take care of things. So let's go check on our capybara. Well, how are these guys doing? Decent, decent. Um, I think they were just getting preyed on kind of heavily. So yeah, the tapirs seem to be okay-ish. Um, I really can't help them if they're gonna just be silly enough to run repeatedly into a tree that is out of my hands. And then my keepyberas that I love so much. We have five, I think we started off with more. And I think I see an ocelot. Yeah, here's an ocelot right here. Are you coming for the keepybara? <gasps> What's going on? Oh, this fern, what? This fern has been nommed on. Oh my gosh! Okay, so this fern is almost gone because it's been nommed on. I have actually never seen like the actual leaf where the leaves actually go down, so that's kind of interesting. Alright, we'll put in some more ferns and a, a couple more like orchids because it seems like the plants are being nommed on. And then let's follow this ocelot for just a second. Looks like there's a little turtle path. Ah, oh, it's so cute. Oh, and here's another ocelot. What's going on over here, huh? Are you guys gonna say hello to each other, perhaps? Are you going hunting? Uh-oh. I have some bad news for you, tortoise. Probably. Oh, nope. I think they're, oh my gosh, are we witnessing like a hunt? Oh my goodness, and there's some alerts going down. Oh, somebody, somebody is no longer with us, you guys. Somebody has been consumed, who is this? Okay, we need to be in Albot mode to be able to see who that is. All right, that's a palm. Oh, 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 oh. Is this the end? Is this the end for this? Capybara, you're only six weeks old. I, I don't, I don't know if you're gonna get to seven weeks old. Just to be honest. I don't know. We'll have to see. All right, so this guy died. Ah, it's one of the little guys again. Okay, so there's that. And then what are our alerts? A group of armadillos, multiple groups of capybaras. I have more than one group. <laughs> I didn't know that. They have um, low population. So yeah, we need a lot of food. These ocelots are just ridiculous. They just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. Armadillo, one. All right, well, huh. I'm gonna have to remember that. Yeah, oh. Okay, no, that capybara is okay. Yeah, I guess that they're going after the armadillos. But yeah, the ocelots are really hard. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about them. Hopefully keep them fed. Let's put in some frogs. Because they I think they ate all of the frogs. So it's kind of an interesting question. I wonder if it's all about like where you put things. Like where you put the predators and where they wander. That keeps these, these other guys alive. So we'll just keep adding some frogs over here, some frogs over there. I think I need to add in, like, did I already add in the butterflies? Yeah, I already added in the butterflies over here. There we go. And then maybe if I add in armadillos, like another population of armadillos over here, we'll see what happens. And then, yeah, we've already got one population of ocelots and they seem to be eating everybody. So I'm not sure. Yeah, a group of agout agouties. <sighs> have low population and I'm not sure what to do about that because it's like well everybody's eating them so how do you handle that and I wish it would tell me which group of ants like I'm, I'm not too concerned about a group of ants because we have lots of ants 
Maybe it's the armadillos are working hard on the ants? We'll have to see. Is it these ants? No, those ants are okay. All right, well, everybody seems to be okay over here, so let's go over. Well, I say that. Everybody is about as okay as we can get them at this stage, in my opinion. So we are gonna go over and we're gonna see what's going on in not Kansas, our grasslands area. I'm not gonna be too worried about a low population on a group of ants, because we're not losing, we're not losing some major death. Like we're not having major death issues over here. So yeah, we should be okay. All right, well, let's head out. And we're gonna pop on not Kansas. And I'm actually very nervous about not Kansas because it's been about a month. I kept it on medium difficulty because we still have to come in and add in tons and tons of plants. And I haven't really done that yet. All right, details. Plant health, yay, 80%. Animal health, 100% with diversity. We've got barely any, any income coming from over here, but that's okay. So tell me all about it, population markers. All right, oh, we have lots of detritus, so we need to clean up that. Um, let's see. We have five individuals in the prairie dog territory. We have two individuals in the red fox territory, and we have five individuals in the jackrabbit territory. So it looks like we need to get rid of some of the poop. That is something that needs to happen. So let's get in lots of earthworms. We'll put these guys down and then we're going to try to make the grasslands into a proper grasslands today and i also want to actually expand it straight off the bat so we can expand to zone two whoops oh wait that is how you expand to zone two yes i would like to expand to zone two thank you very much dun 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 look at this you guys this is gonna be so cool all right now we're just going to have to add in so much grass so much grass go little owl about go i wonder what the heck oh there's poop over here Come, my little earthworms, descend upon this spot and remove the poop for me. Look at that, did you see that? That was so cool. Yay, the zone's in a healthy state. We have enough earthworms. That was actually really neat. I didn't expect it to work that quickly. All right, so let's put down a sagebrush. And then what, about, what, what kind of grass do I like the most? It sounds like an odd question, but we need to compare the different types. We have the blue grandma grass, the buffalo grass, and then like do, do, do we've got switch grass and i think the switch grass is the really fun one that i like a lot because it's so colorful or it's so big yeah look at that look at that cool all right let's put in a bunch of switch grass over here and then i want a bunch of switch grass kind of ooh, and a skunk bush maybe i like these skunk bushes and you do have a lot of bushes too. That's the thing, like a lot of people will be like, no, Siri, it has to be just like this. Like there's there's only grasslands. And yeah, there's some areas where like I would visit in Kansas where it was just empty grassland as far as the eye could see. And it only looks empty because if you actually start getting into the biodiversity, it's amazing how diverse the grasslands can be. But there's also a lot of areas where you have like trees, you have little clusters of forest, you have bushes. These bushes are very important because they're going to provide nesting sites for different animals. They're gonna provide all sorts of uh, hiding places for prey items. So you can't just like turn your nose up at adding bushes and trees in because you're like trying to be some sort of, some sort of grass purist. All right, there we go. And honey mesquite, ooh, that's really cute. Maybe up in this corner, kind of where the fox is hiding. What are you doing back there, Mr. Fox? Of course you're going to get hungry if you live back there. All right, and then let's see. Maybe some ants can be added in. Let's look at what our wonderful carnivore, the red fox, would eat. Other than the bread, there's a lady who lives under our apartment who, like, feeds the fox and the wild fox bread. She leaves it out and then he'll show up at night. I don't advise that. So let's see what we actually need to feed him. Foxes are omnivores. They usually eat small mammals like rice and rab rice, like mice and rabbits, but will also eat fruit or carrion. The predators, most foxes are taken as prey. Most foxes that are taken as prey are babies. Adults may be attacked by wolves, cougars, or eagles. Wow. Wow, I didn't know an eagle would attack a fox. That's kind of an amazing mental image and reminds me just how big eagles are. Notes. Foxes have a special way of hunting for mice in deep snow. They will stand perfectly still in the snow, listening for the mouse. Once they hear it, they jump straight up into the air, then land on their front paws right on top of the mouse. If they've calculated properly, the mouse will be pinned to the ground and will make a tasty snack. Which is really cool, and you guys have probably seen that when the Arctic uh, foxes will like chase down the mouse in the snow and do that, boing, boing, 
boom and they'll get the little mouse pin down and eat it that looks really awesome and also it takes a lot of practice that's not something that comes naturally to an animal they have to practice and fail a lot and learn how to be successful at those things just like people do <gasps> look at this heather it's so pretty i want to put it down around around somewhere over here come on come on heather all right let's pull up a little bit so i can figure out where to put it oh geez i can't even see it now where are you? I want to place you down. I just can't even find you. Where the heck are you? I, 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 oh, there it is. <laughs> you really have to be kind of on the ground with Owlbot to be able to see what you're doing here. All right, let's do that. And then let's speed things up a little bit too. So we will continue adding in some switch grass for just a minute. And then some of this pretty heather because it's so lovely. And then I think we should probably put in, let's do another jackrabbit group right here. Ah, you guys are so cute. You guys are so cute. Let's see, is there fruit? Yeah, so these honey mesquites actually provide fruit. So we should probably have a few of them kind of scattered around. All right, almost got it, almost. Ha, 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 ha. Man, placing these things can be a little bit tricky. Come on. Oh, I almost had it. Did you see that? There, I got it, perfect. There, doesn't that look so lovely? Yay, okay, and the group of jackrabbits over here. Phew! little albot now has a low population because this fox is basically eating all of them so we need to fix that so let's put this guy over here and then let's see we need to put down more switch grass and everything for the little ones to eat so then we'll add in some switch grass because i'm pretty sure we have a group of prairie dogs there's a low population yeah i think we definitely need to add in more of everybody in order to keep them from being completely eaten um let's do more of some other types of grass now in order to keep them from being completely eaten. Oh, this is so pretty by the foxes. But yeah, just having that one pair of predators, the two foxes, already makes it so that we're having to have to like frantically add in different animals. Ooh, this eastern cottonwood is so pretty. I want to put it like on top of the hill here. Ooh, it's gigantic. What the heck? Oh, this is so lovely. This is so awesome. Maybe some prairie blazing stars to celebrate down here. Nice. And then let's put down like a bunch of buffalo grass. Yeah, let's get lots of buffalo grass and this blue gamma grass kind of mixed in. And this will be perfect because the little the little jackrabbits can come over here and eat this, hopefully thrive. Oh yeah, we need to make sure we have plenty of earthworms while we're running around. All right, and then we'll get some more mushrooms put in. Let's get more buffalo grass down here. Looking good. It's really fun when you start having all of these coins and you can just like build and build and build. All right, there's that. More buffalo grass. And then let's see about getting some other types of prey items in here. Like maybe some frogs. I could see some frogs hanging out right over here. There we go. And then let's get some ants because those, those frogs are going to need something to eat. So we'll put down a couple populations of ants. Hopefully in frog territory. Can I not get it any further? All right, come on little ants. I want to put you like up here under the tree. This seems like the perfect spot. If I was an ant colony, if I was the queen of an ant colony, I would pick this spot because this is so lovely. All right, and then there's also jackrabbits, bobcats, <gasps> garter snakes, let's do garter snakes, yeah. All right, let's get down like more more grasses really quickly and then I wanna put a garter snake in here. Go little frogs, go. This is so fun. All right, let's add in more, there we go. And I want more grass. <laughs> we need tons of it if we're gonna be able to feed everybody. Because grass doesn't give you a lot of nutrition. That's one of the reasons that a lot of creatures that eat grass or eat um, like some of the tough to digest things like just leaves. One of the reasons they have to eat so many of them is because there's not a lot of nutrition that most bodies can get from eating tons and tons of leaves. So that's why they have to eat so many. And that's why like an elephant eats so much. And there we go. A lot of what an elephant eat usually just ends up going out the other side without giving it much nutrition. All right, so let's see, let's get some switch grass in here. Oh, look at the fox. He's like, oh, there's so much food. There's so much room to roam. Are you coming down here for a little frog? All right, and then I just love this look of having the switch grass just like go up, 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 up this little hill. Can I not get it that far over? Okay, what about over here, over here? What's the closest spot right here? Oh, he ate a frog. That is, that is now, it is a dead frog. Are you not gonna eat it? Did you just kill it for fun? We don't have, this is a, a enclosed biome, my little friend. We do not have that kind of luxury here. Please eat your frogs. Eat your frog legs, Fox. Like, you, you, we can't, we can't, yeah. Oh, now he's gonna snooze. 
All right. Well, he he he. Oh, there it is. Now it's a dead frog. Poor frog. <laughs> oh dear. All right. This is actually turning out really nice. Maybe let's add in another population or two of prairie dog. I think there's probably getting to be enough. And then maybe some more mushrooms down here. Yeah, I think there's probably getting to the point where there is enough prey items to do, or enough uh, plant life to support multiple populations of prairie dogs. So I'm gonna put maybe some over here as well. And then maybe put like one of the little bushes so they can hide in the bush if they want. Normally they would dig their own tunnels. And oh yeah, last time I was gonna tell you guys about prairie dog grammar. And I won't touch on it too much because once again, things kind of like clipped along at a different kind of pace. But prairie dogs actually do have kind of their own grammar where they will sort of chirp at each other. And the things that they say, can I put you over here? Maybe over here. And then the, um, the chirps that they use at one another actually can be broken up and if you analyze the chirps then in a lot of the prey dog colonies you can realize that their chirps match up for different prey or predators so like if there's an eagle they have a specific kind of chirp for an eagle and if it's a eagle that's far away or an eagle that's close they have a chirp that comes with the chirp for the eagle that is either the far away chirp and then eagle or the close chirp and then eagle and then the prairie dogs will react differently depending on what that chirp is so if it's a far away eagle they'll usually be kind of like hmm gotta um, look up the sky try to see if it's nearby and if it's a close eagle chirp then everybody will scatter and that's grammar and it's amazing and I loved that research it was so cool when I learned about it oh my gosh I'm gonna have to see if I can dig it up again and share it with you guys but we'll go ahead and put them over here too all right and then we're gonna have to oh, I really wanted to add in sneaks some sneaks would have been so cool but I don't know I don't know I think we might give it a little bit again let everybody sort of settle down see how everyone's gonna do with what we've added in because that was a lot for this little biome to like handle all at once. And the foxes are doing okay. We still have a few prairie dogs here. And yeah, I think next time we'll add in more grass, more snakes. And we might even try with another predator. So we might get like a lot of the prey species spread out and we might try with another predator because I think that that's going to be a lot of fun. So all right, you guys, not Kansas, not doing too bad, not doing too bad. And I can't wait to share more with you all next time. So I'll see you guys then. Bye bye.